Good morning, everybody, um, and, and welcome to the EOA's August virtual network meeting. Um, if I could ask you to, anybody who hasn't muted us yet, if you could just do that for the time being, please. Um, but do feel free to share your videos if you wish. Um, my name's Oliver Smith. I'm the head of membership at the EOA. My role is to share and facilitate the, the virtual network meeting we've got today. I'm delighted to say we've got um, a number of guests, which I'll introduce shortly. But um, firstly, we're probably all very familiar now with Zoom, um, but what you'll have the opportunity to do is to ask various questions. So if you want to use the chat feature at any point, please do post in there and I'll try and ask the questions of our speakers. And also, if you want to be really digital and be reactive, we can see a smile on your face, but also if you want to use the reaction feature and show a thumbs up equally, you can show a thumbs down if you wish, but that'd be quite controversial. We encourage the thumbs up. Um, so just as a bit of a, as a recap as to what we've been doing, um, we've been very much over the past few months connecting our members together. And this is a means of which we've been doing that, but also connecting people on a one-to-one -one basis through facilitated introductions. So if you as an organization, as individuals, need any EO related support, please do get in touch with us and we'll continue to connect you. Um, we've been championing employee ownership. We've been, the, the aim is to share the um, experiences and case studies of many our EOA organisations. And one of the main features and activities that I wanted to focus on just for a couple of minutes with you is our campaigning activity. We've always been a campaigning and lobbying organisation, but at the moment, um, it's very much more prevalent than it possibly has been previously. So the, the Chancellor introduced a review, which you're probably all aware of, of uh, tax reliefs. So for us at the EOA, we identify straight away the significance of the capital gains tax release for the employee ownership trusts. So we're very vocal and we're submitting towards that review at the present time just to ensure the, the integrity and the future proofing of the EOT and those capital gains tax reliefs continue. Whilst a CGT relief should never be a driver towards a business becoming employee-owned, it definitely helps and it's definitely seen an increase in the number. So that's our commitment currently. Additionally, uh, we're putting in a, con a, a contribution to the consultation by Bayes, all around that build back better promotion and theme that's going on through government at the moment because for us we mentioned this in a previous webinar EO can definitely be a part of build back better due to all the positive statistics and resilience that it can demonstrate for the UK economy um, and we're also going to be part of a wider campaign i would use the term again for future proofing the EOT and that's really around profile it amongst all government departments as many as we can and across political parties to ensure they recognize the significance of it. It's significant to us, obviously, and it's significant to you as EO organizations, but we need to profile that more and more to ensure that the growth and sustainability of the sector go forward. So how you can contribute? We're pulling back in the, the One Million Owners campaign that we launched previously and we'd really be delighted if you can pledge. That pledge is quite simple. If you go onto our website, you'll see the, see the page, you'll see the banner, just quite simply pledge. And the more the pledges that we get, helps us to demonstrate the significance of employee ownership and of the EOT. So you should take a lot of things away today, but one action I do want you to do is to make that pledge and encourage your colleagues to do it as well. So, in terms of that's what we've been up to, what we're going to focus on now for the next um, hour and a half or so is this virtual network meeting. So this is around bringing you together as EOA members to learn and to network from one another. So you're going to learn very shortly from uh, Matt Bug at, um, from Make Architects, and he's going to talk to you about, um, he's waving at you now. He's going to talk to you about what they've done to bring back people into the workplace. It's relevant for everybody and it's relevant for us in the EOA as well. And also you're going to learn from Matt and also learn from one another. So once we've heard from Matt and you have the opportunity to ask questions, we're going to break out into four rooms. You've already identified which rooms you'd like to be in. Each room will be hosted and you have the opportunity to ask questions of one another and just learn and network. I encourage you to take, make the most of the opportunity. So in terms of today's topic, 
it's, it sounds big, the future of the workplace. Will the workplace ever be the same as what it was before February, March 2020? Um, who knows? We'd probably all like it to get back to some level of normality, but what's normal going to look like? We don't know. So um, Matt and the team at um, Make have been looking at the existing environment that they have, that workspace and that office, and seeing and considering all the challenges that are now in place due to COVID-19, and really working on innovative ways to bring people back in, make people feel safe, but also be you know, an effective organisation as they have been already. So don't forget, there's the chat function there. Please do post your questions. And after Matt's finished, I'll try and facilitate some discussion and ask Matt the questions that you've posed. Um, so Matt, if you're ready, I'll over to you. That's great. Thanks, Holly. Um, and uh, thanks for a great introduction. Thanks to everybody for attending today. Um, so uh, no small subject to talk about. Um, so I will start by sharing my screen. Um, oh, so Hannah, we've got a host disabled attendee screen sharing, which we need to fix. Hopefully we can do that. Just done it for you, Matt. That's super duper, thank you. Okay. Right, hopefully you guys can now see a red page. If someone could give me a quick shout that you can see that, that'd be fab. Yeah, that's sorted, yeah. Matt. Perfect. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm going to talk to you today um, a little bit about Make, who we are, what we do, and a little bit about our experience over the last few months, which has been mega, and a little bit about what we think the future might look like, and that's informed from the design work that we're currently doing with some of our clients on Workplace. Um, so this is me, I'm Matthew Bug. Uh, this is my alter ego, I guess, in my uh, COVID-19 mask. I'm a, I'm a big fan of cycling, so I've got a, a little uh, cycling motif on that one. Um, so I'm going to split the presentation into two bits today. One is very much talking about uh, Make's journey uh, through the last few months, and then I'm going to pick up on some key trends that we're seeing across workplace design um, on all our, our live projects currently. Um, so we are a design practice. Um, and we have very simply one purpose, which is to design the best buildings, places, and spaces in the world. And this is written on our, on our wall in our studio, and we've all signed our names against that, and this is what unites us together, and this is our mission. Everybody works for this goal. Um, so that's really key to our business. Um, we have offices in London, Hong Kong, and Sydney, but we've done a lot of work recently um, on one make. Um, so, you know, Hong Kong and Sydney are not seen in separate offices. We're, we're united as a single business, and that's a very important thread in all of our communications and how we think about people, how we can communicate to those people. Um, so, we uh, were founded in employee owned, so we're a little bit unique in that sense. So, in 2004, we were set up as an employee owned business with four people that has grown to over 150 today. So we celebrate employee ownership uh, very often, often involves lots of speed, so it's always a, it's always a great time. Um, but it reinforces the message to, to people that have been with us for a long time and to our new starters. Um, and it means, employee ownership means lots of different things to lots of different people, but there's always overlapping um, strands to that. So Jack, for example, talks about responsibility, trust, and openness. Um, Dara talks about pulling together towards that common goal that we just spoke about. Um, and Sharon talks about the inclusion of people's opinions really mattering. Um, the way I always talk about it is, is everybody's helping each other for the benefit of the, um, the business goal. And I, I think that's a distinct difference to other businesses um, that I've worked in in the past where uh, people can often end up competing with each other. We always try and help each other. Um, so MAKE has a very singular focus, and that's our project. Um, this is what we do. Um, so we work across multiple sectors, designing and delivering 
commercial office, mixed use, sports stadia, residential, um, hotels, leisure. Um, I recently uh, was responsible for de designing and delivering five Broadgate in the city for UBS and British land. And that process took us just a little over five years. And that was a workplace for 7,000 people um, under one building, so that's a small village. And everything we learned from that, we took through and shared back into the office. And that, that team was um, continuous through that process. Um, so other than that singular focus, um, what, we, what we like to do is to look into the future. And we set up uh, the Future Spaces Foundation to do exactly that. So this is a foundation that talks to industry experts, colleagues, friends, um, about how things could be or should be in the future. And we pull all that together into published information. And it allows us to think a little bit beyond um, into the future. So uh, just a little bit about me um, personally. Um, I came from Newcastle University with two degrees in architecture. I was very fortunate to go and work for Grimshaw, a kind of classic structured partner, partner arrangement, and worked on large infrastructure and large span projects. And then I worked um, on sites uh, for Foster Partners at the HM Treasury, so managing and delivering the design and construction. Um, and, and at that time, Foster's was over a thousand people. And then I did a complete about turn and went to Sydney for three years to work for a very small 12 person practice. Um, so that experience gave me a very sort of rounded um, feel for business types and project types. And then I came to make, and, and ultimately that was about the people I knew and the relationships um, that I've gotten through my career. Um, but also very importantly, the business uh, type of employee ownership. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about sanity because uh, we've been locked in our homes for far too long. Um, and one of the things that we've noticed um, from our guys is that the mental health has been really important. Um, and we've noticed people using creative outlets um, to, to keep sane, I guess, to keep mentally healthy. Because I, I love this cartoon. It's, it's the dogs walking the owners, um, keeping the owners on the lead. It certainly felt like that at times over the last few months. Um, so this is my colleague, Lucy. She bought a potter's wheel off eBay and just started churning out fantastic vessels and cups. Um, and this is what was keeping her sane while she lived with her two sisters and, and parents. Um, and this is uh, my colleague Frank's little, little timber vessels that he's been making. Um, and then we've even seen some bigger projects. So I made a playhouse for my my girls, I think a little bit selfishly to, to get them out of the house a bit so I could get them uh, some quieter time to do the work. Um, and then my colleague Jason managed to one-up me on that and he built his uh, two boys a skate ramp at the back of his garden. So that was, uh, that was fantastic. And these are all amazing outlets um, that people have used and, and it's really helped them to bond with families and, and really sort of deal with the difficult times that we've had to endure whilst still being able to work and perform um, and output um, our day jobs. Um, so Make has been through a really transformative time. So we are located in Fitzroy in London in an old MCP car park that we refurbished into our studio. Luckily, we don't have lifts. We're not multi-story. So that was uh, a, real, a real plus when COVID came along. We just have this lovely entrance ramp to walk down. Um, and we're open plan, uh, but we are dense. And that's one of the issues that we've been coping with. We have high density, the desks are very close together and they're quite small in places. Um, but we got, we got the guys sort of looking at how we could manage that. So uh, they came up with a fantastic one-way system through the office so people wouldn't collide into each other. And we divided our office into a red and a blue, which was basically saying that 50% of people could be in the office at any given time. And that meant every other desk um, was vacant, which gave that social distancing requirement. We also had lots of sanitizing stations, increased cleaning frequencies, and slightly different rules on how the toilets were used in, in terms of lowering the numbers um, that, that would be available. 
so these are the guys. They, you know, we did all this ourselves. Um, the, the, Paul and Gabriel came in at the weekends and sprayed the arrows on the floors. Um, so everybody got involved. And everybody was part of this process. Everybody put their sketches in, ideas about how to split up the workstations. Our, models, uh, our model maker, Paul, actually 3D printed some handles for the doors, which would reduce touch points. Um, and some of these ideas we implemented, some we didn't. And that's one of the fantastic things about the business is we test and, and often we'll fail, but we always learn. And that's, that's a really key thing. Uh, don't be afraid to try things out. Uh, we, we had really great information that was prepared on the safe return to the studio. We provided everyone with these packs with sprays, masks, uh, cloth, you know, so that we were able to really give people confidence about coming back. Um, and we surveyed lots during the month, so we knew that the, one of the, the real big points was transport, and obviously driving in central London um, isn't an option. So people were really worried about traveling on the train. So we've done all we can to support other modes of transport. So we've put some great information together on cycling, walking, running, uh, scootering, and we've created a buddy system. So for those that want to try and cycle in, uh, we send out another maker to accompany them in on their first time and help with the navigation um, and anything else that they might need a little bit of assistance on. Um, and we've also designed some extra capacity for bikes. So we had space for 30 and we've now um, developed space for in excess of 80. And this is just some images of some bespoke hanging bike racks that we designed that will sit on the main entrance ramp of our office. Um, but the real challenge has been the, the blended working. So there's the VC meetings that are occurring when people have come back to the office. We're getting interesting feedback issues when more than one person is on that call in, the, in person and background noise issues. So we're now starting to mock up little acoustic booths. And this is not about separation uh, for COVID. This is just about creating some acoustically separated space for joining virtual meetings. Um, and again, the guys are making this out of foam board and capper board to start with, and then it might progress to plywood um, once we're happy with those mock-ups. Um, but we're very much in the virtual world, and where we would traditionally pin up drawings and talk around them and huddle around in meetings and sketch, we're now very much always on the on the virtual meetings we're sketching on ipad surface whack on tablets and that's you know maybe because people don't have the room at home to lay out paper or their kids have used their pens to draw up the walls um, so there's a lot of the sketching and ideas that are going digital uh, we use collaboration channels in software like microsoft teams where we'll be sketching and and snapping shots of computer models and talking about ideas and there would be six or seven people in on this conversation. And the great thing about a channel like this is you can actually see the evolution of the idea um, and go back on it, which you know you don't get when bits of paper's lost and emails are all over the place. So this is a you know I'm really keen on this. I find this quite quite uh, an advantage. Um, and even to the point where we at, at Mate we did this fantastic exhibition last year where um, everybody exhibited their work outside of architectural project work, so other creative work they might do at home or be involved with at university. Um, so we decided this year to take the exhibition virtual, and we've designed a virtual gallery to house all of our makers' work inside of. And this virtual gallery can be toured, and you can go right up to the pictures and zoom in, um, which is just fantastic. So. The, the other really uh, kind of interesting bit that we've been looking into in a lot of detail is, is the push um, both from ourselves and our clients on sustainability. And we have a, a working group called Make Neutral um, that, that looks at everything from our office sustainability, our studio, to our education, to how we might reduce carbon on a project from the actual construction right through to its operation. Um, and we use our intranet to disseminate a lot of this information and to interact. Um, 
And, and you know, we've changed a lot in the last couple of years. We don't print paper any year. Nobody's used a printer for the last four months. So we're not going to go back to that. All of these lovely annuals that we send out to our clients will only be digital from now on. Um, we've seen a fantastic drop in aeroplane travel. Um, and, you know, things like our milk and biscuits have obviously gone down as well. But where we can, we're going to try and hold our carbon reduction uh, moving forward from the lessons and, and the data that we've seen through COVID. Um, so for example, we've, we've ditched taxis um, for cargo bikes. So if we're moving models and even people uh, locally within Greater London, we're now using these fantastic cargo bikes with electric Bosch engines. Um, but what we're seeing in our actual projects um, and we're educating clients and ourselves on this is, is a massive focus on carbon um, and bringing down carbon impact through our project. We're seeing some great work being done on well-being, which is, is, is a focus on people and health. And then the other part of it is social sustainability, um, which we'll, we'll talk a little bit about. So I'll talk now about the trends. I'm just going to pick on a few of the trends that we're seeing in our projects that are becoming particularly important uh, with our design work and with our clients. Um, I think the social space is uh, within buildings is, is one of those points. And we've seen a lot of survey and data talk about lockdown loneliness. And I think that's really placed this kind of value um, on how important social space is in our buildings and our workplaces. So there's really the new focus there. Um, and this is all about supporting collaboration, well-being, um, good, good mental health. So as our teams come together in the office, you know, we are seeing a real uplift and how people are interacting, which is fantastic. You know, these, these are the places where we start and finish our charity runs. Uh, we engage, we talk about our expertise, have, have these really uh, fantastic guest speakers in, and of course, have our drinks to celebrate our wins and achievements. Um, and, and not forgetting the unwinding as well. So we have this fantastic table tennis that you can fold up and come in and out of the space so we often have meetings here but this was pulled out just the other day um, for guys to sort of unwind and take a bit of time out the other focus has been health and and really you know who hasn't been thinking about health over the last few months um, a lot of us have found this new connection to the outdoors as we've been locked up at, at home we've been finding the park and, and walking but we're very conscious of these huge levels of anxiety that people have been having to deal with. So we're looking very much at how buildings can nourish and, and with a focus on fitness and activity and support mental health and almost provide these digital detox spaces. Um, so this is our headquarters building in York, which has this fantastic floodlit cafe space at the ground floor um, where people interact throughout the day. And this is our Thomas Clarkson Academy school. We've got this fantastic climbing wall in the space that keeps all the kids active. And then in our um, HSBC Bank Geneva, more contemplative space that includes planting to allow that connection to nature. And we mustn't forget the spaces outside our buildings and between our buildings are just as important. This was Rathbone Place just before lockdown um, and how well this has been used and the curating of the, these public spaces for, for amenity and for functions to support um, workers in the buildings. We're seeing a massive drive in technology, um, and this was already gathering momentum and is pushing further as COVID hit. Um, businesses are very much in the cloud. Um, our buildings are gathering more and more data than they ever have, and we are putting and designing more and more into our computer models. We're seeing um, augmented reality feature more prominently and the, the drive that we started some years ago now in virtual reality is becoming commonplace through our design process. Um, so we, we use the goggles quite a lot now. Uh, traditionally, it was more of a presentation tool. Now it's becoming more part of a working process. So we can run simulations on buildings, test, coordination and clash well before they're built so we know exactly what we're dealing with before we get anywhere near site. And these models have been taken through to the operation of the building to measure things like air quality, 
people movement, vertical transportation. Um, so they're really helping to sort of filter the efficiency and the health of the building, building using data. And then the final one is adaptability. And I think this is a really interesting one. So how do we future-proof our buildings? Um, and we've talked a lot about um, not so much, you know, how, how, we, how we've dealt with, with COVID now, but what might the next pandemic be? What might, you know, the next big thing be that, that our workplaces have to deal with? Um, so, in, you know, we've just seen the government completely change our use classes orders in terms of planning, which is very interesting. So it's become much more flexible to shift retail and office around um, on the high street, for example, and on, on the ground floors of large mixed use schemes. And I think a lot of what we've done at MAKE has been about creating space that can be reformatted, that can be changed around, that can have 24 hour use. Um, so this is a, a space at our 80 Charlotte Street building that's recently be, been finished. But this space can really be reformatted in a number of ways over the, the lifespan of the building. And that's facilitated by column grid um, and structure and format of, of windows at opening. And, the, you know, the, thinking about how spaces can change throughout the day, how you can get more from them. Um, so if there's a, a space not being used, could it be used for a health and wellbeing function? Um, or a talk or a function. Um, we're seeing a much broader spread of types of space. So uh, um, at our HSBC building in Birmingham, um, there's a lot more different types of space to suit different needs of different users. And I think that's become a really key trend. So wh where is this heading? You know, where we are now? So I thought I'd just talk about a couple of things that caught my eye in, in the press over the last few weeks. And one was the announcement by uh, Schroeder's in the Times. Um, so they have said that uh, to their staff that they can kind of work from home forever. Um, so they, they've taken away the mandate for their employees to have any particular number of days in the office. And for Schroeder's, this is very much a, a statement about how flexible they want to be with their employees in the future. It doesn't mean they want to sell their buildings, they want to to get out of real estate, it's, it's almost the opposite. It just means they want to give um, this flexibility approach to their staff. And then Microsoft, um, they've been doing a ton of research and quite often off the back of their softwares like Microsoft Teams, um, but they've looked at uh, a lot of mental health issues. So that we know now from brainwave analysis that um, the, the VR working is far more draining um, on employees. So, you know, they, they can build into software little devices, the, you know, tally to have a break. Um, the way they explain it is your brain is working a lot harder to read people's expressions um, virtually. They're looking at all different types of techniques to try and assist um, improving that. But what we definitely know about the future is that it, it is a 100% focus on people. Um, which is absolutely fantastic. It's about people's health, spaces that reinforce their health, their activity, providing them with lots of different types of spaces to do their work. And we think that um, workplaces in the future really have to think about becoming an attractive destination um, for employees. And I, you know, I think really good social spaces, um, spaces that support your family and community business, uh, your employee-owned business. Um, so that's, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Sorry if I went over a little bit, Ollie, um, but if there's any questions, I'd be glad to take them. Fantastic. Thanks, Matt. Um, you didn't go over. I think you were bang on time, so I congratulate you for that. Um, <laughs> Thank you. We've got, we've got plenty of questions. I think if I, I would try to summarise that, and you ended on the point I was going to make, it seems fundamental. Everything you've done and everything you've noted that is going on is around people and people focused, and the mental health and the welfare, well-being, and they're feeling safe. And no doubt, the changes that you and for many businesses that we've heard about, COVID nineteen has triggered all these changes that were maybe going to be planned for 2021, 2022 but they've been forced. It seems that many are going to be adopted um, as best practice going forward, and no doubt that's the case for many. 
Um, so I'm going to dive into some questions. We've got quite a few. Um, so first one, um, colleagues are clearly very creative at Make. Um, do you have any tips to engage colleagues who are from not so creative teams or not so creative roles? Any tips you can give uh, to get their head in the space to think about redesigning their workspace? Yeah, so I, I actually um, actually don't think you have to be creative at all. Um, obviously, we're lucky because we have a lot of people that are, but um, I think it's about involving your people. Um, so getting them to be a part of the process and making them feel valued. Um, a lot of that is, is often about um, playing to people's strengths. Um, so working out, you know, who's good at what. Um, but I think if you can involve people and get their buy-in um, and be clear about what it is um, that you're trying to achieve so that, you know, you've got, you've got that sort of agreed purpose. Um, I mean, what we do a lot at Make is um, as people are getting involved with, with this, we actually then ask them, to relay it all back to the business, to present it back to the business at the end of the week. So not only are they involved in, in doing it, but they're also um, then standing up and explaining it to everyone else. So that's you know, the, the full ownership of, of what they're doing. So then they are curating any feedback they're getting from the business, um, which, which has worked really well for us. Excellent, thank you for that. And, and the fundamental of employee ownership in terms of that concept. Yeah, e exactly. And I, I think, you know, we've been lucky because uh, we were founded that way. So it's always been a part of our process. But often we have people join us from non-employee owned businesses who, you know, really have to sort of uh, understand that concept. And quite often it can feel alien to people. But um, I think if they're given encouragement and support, then they, they will, will flourish. Excellent. Thank you. So I'll move on to our next question. Um, what do you think working from home will look like at Make going forward? Any challenges? Yeah, I think we are already in a phase of blended working. Um, and, and by that, I mean we've got in-person uh, you know, we've got people in the office. We've actually got people meeting people in person, people doing site visits. And then we've got people doing VR meetings. But then we've also got a combination of both. Um, and at the moment, like, like I explained earlier, one of the biggest issues we're dealing with is, is background noise and feedback in the office, which is carrying a lot of those virtual meetings. Uh, those hybrid meetings so that's a bit of a you know a bit of a technology issue and we're going to test out these little booths see if they they help um, but like I said you know if, if the booths don't work they'll they'll go in the bin and we'll, we'll have had an interesting learning process from it um, and we do it you know we do a lot of that we get a lot of stuff wrong um, but we always learn something from it so it's always quite valuable um, but I think um, I think the home working will be there um, in the future for some time. Um, I think it's, it will, it's, it's about um, addressing uh, the flexibility issue uh, for our partners. So everybody has a different requirement on flexibility depending on their situation at home. Um, and we will try and support that as, as far as possible. I mean, what I would say about Make as a business um, is that we thrive on in-person collaboration so it is in, important for us um, that people do feel safe and are able to come to the studio um, to collaborate because you know we can be really efficient through um, through software uh, that's been proven over the last few months um, but what we need is the the spark of the innovation and um, collaboration that often comes from the, the more informal in-person um, dialogue. Right, fantastic. I mean, definitely got, so one more question here, two people have pretty much asked the same question about the future of the office space, um, commercial property. Um, do you see that as a, as a potential threat as more and more people consider and more and more organisations consider the, the opportunity of working at home? 
I, I, I think we see it less of a, as a threat and, and more of an opportunity to get more out of our um, commercial office. I mean, certainly um, our, our clients are asking us at the moment um, for the ultimate adaptability and flexibility in the workplaces that we'll be delivering in five years' time. Um, but I think what we see between now and then is a real focus on providing um, destination for these workplaces. Um, so, what, you know, what has to be done in terms of um, the design of that workplace um, to want to really enthusiastically encourage people to, to come in um, to it. Um, and a lot of that is about, you know, the threads that we've and the focuses that we've spoken on today. Um, so, you know, I think we'll ultimately get much better quality um, workplace and space from it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, right, I'm conscious of time. I'm going to move us on, but um, thanks for that, Matt. Really insightful, really interesting. Um, I'll be honest, for us at the ELA, we're, we're a small team, but we have an office, as we, as we many organisations do. So part of that, us getting the team back into that space is a very relevant conversation for us and topic as it is for everybody. Um, so I hope everybody found that useful. And I'm sure Matt's quite happy. Um, if anybody wants to ask him any further questions or just pick his brain and share some insights, he'd be more than happy to take that after today's event. Um, we've got a, an applause as a reaction. If anybody wants to do it similar with a thumbs up or a clap in their hands, please do so. I'm sure uh, Matt Ego will appreciate it. Come on, Matt. Thank oh, my word. Thanks, for, thanks very much, guys. And I'm on the ERA hub as well, so feel free to drop me a message through the hub, too. Great. Thanks very much, Matt. Right, I'm going to move on to the, um, to the second half of the meeting. So what we're going to do now, as I mentioned at the, at the start, this element is around networking bringing you together to learn from one another so when you booked you uh, you're asked the question which breakout room would you like to go into so we've we've already pre-assigned you allocated you the rooms you're going to be in uh, so what's going to happen um we're going to break out into four rooms you will disappear shortly Hannah's going to control all that and you will reappear with your peers who are going to have uh, topic-based conversations with you you'll have a host in each of those rooms um, they'll just quickly introduce themselves. They're there to chair, facilitate, but also contribute. Um, and they'll talk you through what's going to happen. And then we'll come back together at about quarter past 12. We'll summarise what's happened in those rooms, and then we'll bring it towards an end. So, Hannah, if you're ready, if you would like to um, make us all disappear and then reappear.